Today I'm going to take a look at the hand path in transition and area of the golf swing that I pay particular attention to with players because I find it really connects back to a player hitting more good quality golf shots. I hope you enjoy. Thanks once again for joining me. So today we're looking at the hand path in transition and as I mentioned before the transition is just probably the most important phase of the golf swing that connects back to whether the shot is going to be successful or not. Um, I find that players can get out of position through backswing and then if they move well in transition or they have a good transition they're able to hit good golf shots even though they haven't moved well. That said I find that transition is often better when the backswing is better. So it's uh, there's a little bit of a trade-off there. But today, let's look at particularly, uh, I should say more specifically, the hand path in transition. And for transition today, I'm going to define it just from the area of the goal swing from where the lead arm is parallel to the ground, to the top, to the lead arm back being somewhat parallel to the ground. So right around here, to here, to here. And what I see in a lot of top ball strikers is that pretty much the hands will trace each other from here to here to here. Uh, now, that said, sounds easy enough. It's not though, because there's more moving elements in the golf swing. There's uh, a whole system to keep in mind as well as the shot that we're trying to hit. So with players, I look at this carefully because it's a great indicator of how the players are playing force in the start of the downswing. And I find if a player does really well in that phase there, then they're somewhat freewheeling into impact, assuming that They've uh, got some nice clear concepts of the shot they're trying to hit and their body is able just to facilitate the movement from here through the shot. So just more value there to a good transition. I'm going to give you a couple of things just to help through backswing to do that. And then a couple of uh, insights in the transition phase for the lead side in the start of the downswing. I find if a player rotates well with their body in backswing and moves well through the trail arm, it's going to make it a lot easier to keep the hand path where it needs to be in the start of downswing. But then I'm also going to tie in a couple of things that will help you to do that as well. Okay, before we go into that stuff, I just want to thank Mizuno and State of Matter. I've got two great partners there that I'm able to share their products with you guys for the videos. And they really does mean a lot to me that I'm able to do that. So please make sure to check out their product lines um, moving into this golf season. Okay, so let's start with the backswing. As I mentioned, if a player moves well through their rib cage and moves well around their trail arm, it often puts them into a good position to apply the force into the handle in a way that the hand path is gonna trace how they moved on the way back in the start of the downswing there. So you could very much obviously tie this back to the visual of the plane that the club swings on as well. So it's, and what I like about the force being applied this way is you can see that when I do that, when I match the hand path, there's not too much manipulation one way or the other with the club there. So it keeps the club very much like the force moving down the plane and it stops too much deflection of the club. So the sweet spot isn't moving too much over the place. It's staying very much on plane. So great simple drill for the rotation and the trail arm is one that I've shared before. If we set up here, I'm getting, again making, um, really making sure that I'm set up nice and square and in good posture here to make sure that I rotate well. Let my arms just hang. I'm gonna turn my trail palm out to allow my elbow to sit in. I'm gonna put my lead hand underneath my arm as so. And now all I'm gonna do here is keeping my elbow pointed into my hip is I'm gonna make a thumb position here, okay, in my trail hand. Now rotating into backswing, I'm gonna drive the rotation with the rib cage and I'm gonna allow the thumb to point up and over my shoulder to somewhat out to say 11 o'clock. So if the target was 12 o'clock, the thumb is going out to 11 o'clock there. And the reason I'm doing that is so that it allows my shoulder here to sit down nicely because I'm making sure that my rib cage is nicely turned, my shoulders sat down. So in that position there is gonna allow me to put the force into the handle the way that I'm um, intending to do so. So again, from here, allow the elbow to sit in towards the hip, make a thumb position without the elbow changing or without the shoulder position changing. And then from there, the rotation comes from the rib cage. So it's, it's, it's very much a nice connection um, or nice relationship, I should say, between my arms and my body. I'm allow the thumb to point up 
and then over my shoulder there. And that's my backswing feel here to allow the hand path to move into a nice spot, but also to position the body nicely moving into the downswing. So that's the backswing. Then once you're in a good spot there with the club, so let's get let's do that now with the club. So that would be thumb up, rib cage is rotated nicely. Thumb feels like it's going out towards 11 o'clock there. I feel like I'm in a really powerful position there to pull on the club in the start of the downswing in that spot anyway. So just from there, where I see most players go wrong in the start of downswing is the relationship between the lead arm and the rib cage. Now that might not be where they need to put their attention, but it's an area that I particularly notice when I'm looking at the swings on video or in 3D. So from the top of backswing there, what I would encourage is, again, in a good transition sequence, pelvis moves first, then the rib cage. Now, just today in this video, I want to put the attention more on the rib cage and the lead arm interaction here. So with the rib cage moving before the arms in the start of the downswing, what you'll notice is the distance between my arm and my chest is going to decrease. And when that happens, I'm going to get a nice stretch across my lead uh, side of my rib cage there. So if I go to the top of my backswing there into that spot that I was just rehearsing to just a moment ago, and then the pelvis moves and then the rib cage, and I feel like the space between my lead arm and my chest decreases, I really feel a good stretch across here. And now the, the sensation I would encourage so many is that when you get that stretch, just don't allow the stretch to pull your hands too much out in front of you. Allow it to have a sense that it's staying on that trace. And that's gonna create a nice um, opportunity to create some more club head speed because just that stretch, something I've spoken about quite a few times now, across the lead side of the shoulder, across the lead side of the rib cage, it's something that's correlating, it'll help with your club head speed, but it'll actually also help with your club control because players are often looking for more rotation through the shot and that rotation comes as, um, let's just say an effect of creating a stretch. And then there's like the, um, the reaction where we, we, we let that stretch go. And that's gonna pull the body up and open through the shot. So just super important for us to get the right sensation around this lead side for many players in the start of the down scene. So to the top, I'm in that spot there that I got through my feel before. And then from there, Pelvis, rib cage, reduces the space here. Hands are now in a good spot here coming into downswing and I shouldn't have to think too much through the shot when doing that, okay? So I would start off with many, getting a good position in the backswing, using that drill there, relating it back to your club and then starting the downswing with that sensation of pelvis, rib cage, losing the space. Now, if you're a player, when you look on camera, and your hand path gets this way on the way down, there's a chance that you might already have too much of losing the space there. So you might be a player that would need the opposite. So from here, you might want to feel more arms in the downswing and actually create space. So pay attention to which player you might be. If you're the player that gets here and then you don't have any space anyway between your chest and your arms, you're gonna have to get to the top and allow your arms to fall a little bit to have a little bit more space there. And you can see that when you do that, it's gonna help you to keep your hands on the path that they took to the top of backswing. So really important to pay attention to what kind of player you are. If you're a player that has too much space, you're gonna to have to close the gap between the chest and the arm. If you're a player that doesn't have any space, you're gonna to have to let the arms work a little sooner in the downswing and create some space, okay? So let's, let's have a look at how that would work hitting balls now. So setting up here, got my sensation there into the backswing of how I want to work to the top there. Right arm position feels really good. Rib cage rotation feels really good. Got a nice sense of how I want to move into downswing. Let's hit one. Pretty good there. I felt as though I could have done a bit better job in the transition phase. So didn't get the sensation I wanted of the stretch related back to the hand, where the, where the hands were. But overall, pretty happy with that one there. A little, little cleaner than I wanted. Would like to take a little bit more of a divot. So let's get a sense there to the top. 
really feel like my arms are in good structure as well when I do that backswing feel, then that's, that's the feel I'm looking for there. Really feels though I get the club coming from a good spot and I can have a good amount of covered speed when doing that. Nice one there as well. Okay, so a couple of points is there for you to kind of take into improving your hand path there. Um, I would start with backswing with most players. And then from there, depending on what pattern I saw with the chest and the lead arm in the start of the downswing and how the hands were moving, I would kind of tailor the very start of the downswing with, uh, with just the focus on that lead arm and uh, the ribcage relationship. 